Hi, it's Renee. Welcome back to The Left-Handed Reader. I thought I'd catch you up on some books that I've read, ones that I didn't read, and what I've just picked up from the library. I mentioned the last time that I was reading The Constant Nymph by Margaret Kennedy. This is my second Kennedy. I read The Feast um, six months ago and I loved The Constant Nymph. It was funny, comedic writing from the get-go. I love Margaret Kennedy's wryness and silliness. Um, she writes so uh, such interesting characters. This is about a group of adult children of an artist named Sanger. Sanger dies and they are left scattered. Um, they're, they're not all adults. Some of them are teenagers or tweens, but, um, and a family friend named Lewis Dodd and how some of the older, uh, children interact with him. Um, I, I don't use Goodreads in any real way. I have an account. I sometimes update it, but I had read in the uh, in the introduction by Anita Bruckner that this was really popular when it was published. I think it was in the um, 1920s and I just wanted to read more about it. So um, I went on maybe Goodreads and some other places and today people think differently of course about this book than they did back then. Um, there is um, some uncomfortableness about Lewis and his affection for one of the younger women. But the young woman is 16, I think, and um, she is the uh, so-called nymph, I guess, in this book. That's not really clear to me, but through reading some of the reviews, uh, I guess that was the case. But, um, but I didn't get any ick factor from this book at all. Um, it just really felt of its time. And the most important thing is all her characters have agency. Um, they're in control of what they're doing. No one is making anyone do anything in this book. So, oops, there's a gnat. Um, so anyway, I love it. The Feast, it's a, it's a really good story and such an interesting premise, but I got confused by all the characters and I was just too lazy to figure it out. I finished Everest 1922. This is about the first expedition of Everest, not the more famous one from 1924, but this one also includes George Mallory, like the one from 1924. What I love about this book is the all the research that Mick Conifree has done. And a part of that research was to read all the letters from the guys in the two recon missions and then the attempt to scale Everest and go as high as anyone had ever gone at that point. And through those letters, he really discovers their characters and how each one is so different from the other. And I love that. This is such a, such a good nonfiction expedition book. I'm uh, a lover of these kinds of books. And so from the library, I had a couple holds and then I picked up this small memoir from Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and I apologize if I'm not saying that right, Notes on Grief. It's about her experience after her father unexpectedly dies. And he's in Nigeria, and, um, and she and her siblings are scattered um, amongst uh, different places. She's in the US during the pandemic and can't get home. This has to do with um, her family's traditions in the um, the burial um, ceremony, and it's about her father. And um, he's a professor in Nigeria when she was growing up. Um, I'm about halfway through already, and um, I just love her writing. What else? Oh. This biography about Elizabeth Hardwick, I don't know who Elizabeth Hardwick is other than she was married to the writer Robert 
Lowell, um, A Splendid Intelligence. I actually think there's another biography about Elizabeth Hardwick that I was meaning to pick up, but I've already started reading this and it's fine. I like it. I like reading biographies of writers, of creative people, I should say. This was one of the holds Foster by Claire Keegan, a new Keegan book. Um, I read small things like these uh, a couple months ago. It was my first Claire Keegan, and I think I'll just read whatever she puts out. Um, this is actually the first time it's been published in the U.S., so it's not a new book. Um, so I said it was new, but it's not. Um, it's now part of the school syllabus in Ireland. It's won some awards, and I don't know when it was first published. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know more once I read it. And then I got this book, Toad by Catherine Dunn. This, is, this was unpublished when it was first written, so it's 50 years old. It was written in the 70s, but she then went on to read Geek Love. And I really, it, which became a cult classic. Um, so it's dark humor, wry. It's about a college-aged girl, I think in, I think in New York City. But I'll, uh, I'll let you know more about this later. It sounds very intriguing. I've started it already. I really like it. The books that I'm not reading anymore are the two Iris Murdochs that I got, um, which was... One of them was called Under the Net. I read about half of that and I just never connected with the main character or anything he was doing. This was an early book of Iris Murdoch's. And then the other one was also early and it was called The Something and the Good, um, something like that. And I couldn't get into it either. So I'm looking for the two, from the library, the two books that I read of Iris Murdoch's back in the late 80s um, or early 90s that I really liked. Um, so I had to, uh, I have to look for those and order them from the libraries. They don't have them on the shelf. I can't recall what they are now, but um, one of them was an ac academic setting. So it was called The Something Apprentice? The Pupil Something? I don't know. Um, but when I look them up, I'll put them in my notes so that you know um, what they are. And um, that's all that I have for now. Um, I'm going to continue reading these and let you know how I get on. I'm usually reading, oh, I'm forgetting what I was gonna say. I'm usually reading an older book, uh, mostly a classic. And for some reason I don't have it here, but I also got out Barbara Pym's Excellent Women. I've read two other Barbara Pims, um, Some Tame Gazelle in like 2020. And then earlier this year, I read A Quartet in Autumn, which I really liked. And I always like to have a lighthearted um, classic book from um, usually a woman writer on the go. Although I have to say that recently I just was in an E.M. Forrester read along on Bookstagram. And uh, we read Howard's End and, and, and what was the first one? Oh my gosh, I'm totally forgetting. It's not about the house. It was about, oh, anyway, I'll put that in my notes, but I loved them. I loved everything about those two books. I was, oh, were angels fear to tread. Um, I was so surprised and delighted and I just loved every minute. So anyway, thanks for listening.